Allison Schroeder, yesterday was a great day for you. Hidden Figures got a Writers Guild of America nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay. How did it feel when you got the news you'd been nominated alongside Ted Malfi? It was amazing. Um, however, at the same time, I was on the home phone with the pediatrician because my daughter, my six-week-old newborn daughter, was sick. So oh. she then proceeded to vomit all over me. And I was like, this is the universe keeping me grounded. <laughs> um, <laughs> so very exciting moment, very, um, you know, vomit-covered moment. <laughs> down in infamy. Well, uh, congratulations, and uh, I hope your uh, child is feeling better. She is, thank goodness. Wonderful. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Hidden Figures. Um, tell us a little bit about what this movie is about and what attracted you to it as a writer. Well, it's the true story of three female mathematicians at NASA during the Cold War. So Katherine Johnson, who did the math for John Glenn's mission, and Dorothy Vaughn, who sued the wave of the future and taught her women to program, and then Mary Jackson, who was the first female aeronautical engineer in the country. Um, and honestly, uh, Donna Gelati and Renee Witt uh, had read my, my sample and submitted to uh, a book proposal, which was Margot's Hidden Figures book proposal, and another book to me. And I immediately saw Hidden Figures and was like, oh, I have to do this, and called them up. And they had no idea that I'd grown up at NASA and had interned at NASA, and my whole family had a background there. So it just felt right from the beginning, honestly. I was like, I know this world. I've uh, played on the Mercury capsule as a kid. Please let me write this. And they said yes. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, how growing up in NASA uh, helped give you um, guidance, information, research materials. How did that influence your writing of the script? Well, I think if I hadn't had that inside information, trying to come into NASA and create that world would have been very difficult. But I've literally been in the original mission control. We, um, When I was in the NASA Nurture program, we got to play out some of the missions and how they went down. So I'd physically touch the buttons that they'd touched and um, been in the capsule and knew the math and have studied my, myself my whole life. And so there was just a foundation to go upon. And I also knew that the culture at NASA was very inclusive and that there was this common goal that you felt all the way from like the cook in the cafeteria to the person that was working on the payload bay, everybody felt a part of the mission. And that was one of the central themes of this movie was it took every single person to get these astronauts up into space. What's extraordinary is the fact that it's a story that not a lot of people have heard. Right. Um, so your reactions to hearing the story for the first time, were you aware of the story before you had gotten the book or? Not at all. I mean, I knew that women had worked at NASA because my grandmother was a computer programmer in the 60s and 70s at NASA. But I had no idea about the segregated computing pools, and I had no idea about these three women and their contribution. And of course, you read it, and this is one of those great moments as a writer where nothing can beat the truth. Every time I read more about them, I was like, oh, this is so much better than anything I could ever make up. Mm -hmm. And did you have the opportunity to, to speak with Katherine Johnson? I know she's still alive at the uh, ripe old age of 98. Um, she is. <laughs> so uh, did you have an opportunity to, to speak with her as you were researching her character? She wasn't, she wasn't feeling well when I was writing most of it. And so it went through Margot, the author, honestly. And the biggest request Catherine made was, this can't just be about me. It has to be about the other women I worked with. You need to highlight that this was a group effort. And I took that very seriously. And this was always sort of a love letter of friendship about these three women and how they lifted each other up, which is incredibly important. I don't think we see enough of in films or the world. <laughs> Right, yeah. And, and each woman has their own individual arc. I mean, obviously, Catherine, played by Taraji P. Henson, is the central focus of the film, but also Octavia Spencer's character, Janelle Monáe's character, and all the people who are in their orbit as well. Can you talk about, as a writer, balancing those three arcs and giving each woman uh, equal time and equal room to breathe? Was that difficult? Well, it's interesting. In the research, I immediately knew what their arcs would be. So. I loved the idea of Dorothy seeing the future and making it happen for her women. And I think it's a theme we can see today, technology changing our lives. And then Mary, when I read about how she had to petition the court, I said, okay, well, this is her journey. And then Catherine, when I learned, he said, have the girl run the numbers. So from the beginning, it was those storylines and that's never changed. And that's been really great. You know, we started out as such a small sort of indie movie. So the big thing that got to change was sort of the scope. So we always knew, how are we going to show these women and what time period? Because the book covers 40 years. So we chose John Glenn's mission. And then the fun thing has been 
you know, as the movies got bigger and bigger in pre-production, we started to get to show the actual astronauts and we got to show space and we got to make it a little bit bigger. But the general frame of the story, the characters and their arcs and the big set pieces have been there from the get-go because it came from the research. Right, and, and the storyline takes place right at the beginnings of the civil rights movement, uh, 1959 to uh, early 60s. Can you talk a little bit about um, showing the instances of uh, racism that these three women faced because I mean they, they were doing these extraordinary uh, things at a time where bathrooms and water fountains were right. still segregated. Yes I mean it was just again I just had her book proposal and there's a few sentences that stood out to me so one was about how there used to just be a window in the cafeteria and they had to go pick up their lunches from the back and that really stuck to me and I said well of course we have to have a, an entire scene there and you get to see so clearly the divide and then another was Mary Jackson actually was the one who couldn't find a restroom and the white ladies laughed at her, knowing that she would have to run half a mile back to the colored restroom. And as a woman, that really struck me because I thought, well, you're in Virginia and there's a dress code. So you're either in the dead of the summer in nylons and heels or the dead of winter in nylon and heels running half a mile. And so I gave that to Catherine to show just how much of an outsider she was at the space task group and then Hollywooded it up with, you know, Kevin Costner's character knocking down the sign. Um, but there were just moments like that throughout, like the fact that they carpooled together, I loved, so they didn't have to ride at the back of the bus. Um, and there's just so much territory we got with the fact that these women begin and end their days together. Um, and so it was just, these little moments that they would mention in interviews or I'd find in research that we sort of blew out into bigger set pieces to show the discrimination. Mm -hmm. What was the most difficult uh, part for you as a writer to, to crack? Was there a particular scene or a passage or something like that that you had trouble with? The hardest part was cutting. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were so many great stories and there were so many other women, like Christine Darden is this amazing uh, scientist, but she was the generation after them. And so there was just no way to put her in the film. And I tried many ways to you know, cut to a high school girl looking up at stars and everyone was like, nobody's gonna get it, Allison. So when I first switched to Donna, I was trying to cover 40 years and she was like, lady, do you know how many vintage cars I'd have to get on our budget? Um, <laughs> I was like, okay, noted, noted. And so how do you write a movie about space travel with, a, with technically a pretty low budget? And so that was one of the challenges and the key is you just sink into the characters and you focus on you know the small personal moments. And I think they work in this film. And each actor is given a, a moment to really um, to shine, yeah. you know, like an individual moment, like uh, uh, Catherine's moment where she talks about having to run back and forth to the bathroom or Kevin Costner knocking down the sign or uh, Janelle Monet's great speech in the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about giving each actor this sort of big moment? Well, I mean, I just, that's what they were building towards. And, and what I love about Catherine's story is she gets a few, right? So she gets the big monologue about the bathroom, but she doesn't stop there, right? Because you don't just win one battle and the war is over. She was still discriminated against. And that was really important to show this is a marathon, right? It doesn't just end with one victory. You have to keep pushing. So then she gets to get in the Pentagon meeting and then, you know, run the numbers for Glenn and prove herself. And does she get to stay in the space task group or not? And so that was really fun to show their journey was sort of never ending. And I remember at one point with Dorothy Vaughn, I had this line of, you know, black women in the hallway. And Donna Gelati said, the producer said, you know, do we really, do we really need this scene? I said, yes, because we have to show this wasn't just one woman, that this was all of them. And of course, that became one of my favorite scenes, which is Dorothy marching down the hallway with her army of programmers. So. I have I have some wish fulfillment that I love to write, and so I got to do it on the script, man. <laughs> Indeed. Um, now, working with uh, Ted Melfi, who uh, also directed the film, did you two write together at all, or, or did he come in afterwards? Or? Yeah, he came in afterwards. So he um, he came onto the project about a year after I'd started working on it last summer, and he just fell in love with the story as I think everybody did. And um, he's a writer director. And so he wanted to add his own touches and especially because we now had a bigger budget. So we could go into space and, and we could see the astronauts and we could have parades and we could have fanfares. So he sort of added in what he wanted to shoot as a director. And then he's a bit more of a romantic uh, than me. So it, he added a few more scenes to the Jim Johnson love story, um, which I think is wonderful. And I think it, 
it, it feels so classic Hollywood, those scenes. Right, that was something I was going to ask about because uh, the movie does a really good job of, of not only uh, showing the mission and their work at NASA, but also you get little glimpses of their personal lives, not just Catherine's uh, romance with Mahershal Ali's character, but um, uh, Janelle Monae's uh, husband is, is very much looking forward into the civil rights movement. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Octavia Spencer with her children. Can you talk about adding in those little touches there? Well, so it was interesting. The first draft I was you know, this is a technical script when you really boil it down. It's about a lot of math. So the, the first draft was so about the science and the math and me getting everything right. And then Donna said, okay, you did that. Like, I understand it as a lay person. Now go have fun. And that was the favorite draft to write. So suddenly them getting, you know, tipsy together and sharing their dreams and the, you know, scenes at the churches and dancing at the cocktail party. And, you know, I wrote so many different proposal scenes of how I thought it would would go down and um, with her children and, and you know, I, I loved when I thought about, oh, she is a mother too, and what must it be like with those kids having to do bomb drills for the Russians? And so um, that was sort of how that came about, was then just getting to come in and bring, you know, my sense of humor and my quips and my quirkiness, and then Ted added his own quips and his own quirkiness to it as well. Well, yeah, I think the brilliance of the movie is that uh, it doesn't get lost in all of the science and numbers. I mean, it does a really good job of uh, presenting that in a way that it's clear to an audience and also does not um, talk down to them. Right, right. And that was important. I actually was a math tutor uh, to, when I was a starving artist. And so oh, wow. teaching math uh, came in very handy. And how do I ex you know, explain all of this in the dialogue and the, the shotgun line of trying to explain how hard it was to get him into reentry um, was there was always sort of a great metaphor for us that we used. Um, but I think at the end of the day, these women, when you read about them, were so well-rounded and multidimensional. And, uh, you know, Catherine was a pianist and she ran a Girl Scout troop and Dorothy was in a singing like, group and they were all in the choir and they had these incredible families. And we needed to show that. I think we needed to break the stereotype of a female scientist or a scientist in general and, and show them as these amazing, you know, women with great personalities. Right. And the film has really... Uh touched a lot of people who've seen it. It's yet to open wide, but anybody who's seen it so far, I saw it at a SAG screening. It was uh, very well received. And uh, you could tell how much the story of these three women meant to so many people, especially black women who had never heard the story before. Um, would you, uh, what do you hope people take from the movie when they see it? I think I just want them to have some hope and have some happiness, honestly, about the good in people. Um, that may be very cheesy right now, but I think we need some stories of people doing the right things and people triumphing from hard work and perseverance. Um, and so one of the best things that I'm reading on social media is people going to see it twice and people going mothers and daughters or high schools or middle schools. And that I never saw coming, right? That this was going to be in a way more than a movie, that it was going to be educational and that it was going to draw people in. And I think people are seeing it more than once because the first time we're so used to the, the bad, right? We're so used to that horrible scene where something terrible happens to them and you kind of keep waiting the whole movie and they keep rising above and they keep being successful. So I think people are going to see it a second time because they can just relax and say, okay, I know everything turns out fine and I can now sit back and enjoy and relish in these sort of moments of triumph. So I pray that little girls and little boys go to this movie and it, it changes them and they think, I can do anything I want to do. I can go be a, a, a scientist, a mathematician, or astronaut, anything they want. And it gives roles to actresses that uh, you would not normally think of. You know, I mean, and, Yeah, that's a huge thing for me when I'm writing. I mean, actresses talk all the time. Where are my roles? Where are my roles? And you know, I was a struggling writer for a long time, and I would scream for myself, I'm right here writing them. <laughs> just, just come read my scripts. So when I wrote this, I thought, please, if only I could be a fly on the wall watching them read the script and see them go, oh, this is different. And I, and I got a bit of that reaction from Octavia. I, I got sort of forwarded sort of a live tweet of her reaction. So I danced around the living room a bit. But um, these aren't roles you see often for women and certainly not black women. So I think, I hope this changes the game. I really do. Absolutely. Uh, and the film has found a lot of... Uh, uh, acclaimed from awards bodies, not just the WGA, but at SAG Ensemble and the Golden Globes and 
Critics' Choice. What does that kind of recognition meant for you and, and for everyone in the film? I think it's it, it's crazy. It's a dream, honestly. And I, I we're like it's kind of the little engine that could. And I think everybody keeps being a little bit surprised, like, oh, wait, really? Oh, okay. Uh, and so now, you know, we're 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 going full force and and doing the screenings and talking about the movie because I think you know, the more recognition it gets, hopefully the more people go see it. And ultimately that's what you want is these three women deserve this recognition. It's about them. And, you know, I, I just want everyone to know their story and reclaim this bit of history. So if awards can help, great. Well, it's a wonderful movie and uh, congratulations on it and on your uh, Writers Guild nomination. Uh, thank you so much, Allison. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Have a great day. All right, you too.